Looking for a movie that's a real emotional roller coaster? Well, check out the thrill of it all. This 1963 film is full of funny, surprising, and sad moments that will keep you glued to the screen. But don't just take my word for it, watch the video and see for yourself. Do you have a favorite part or character from this movie? Share your thoughts and memories in the comments below. So, grab some popcorn and let's dive into the excitement of the thrill of it all. You won't want to miss it, trust me. In a 1963 movie, there are different views on its humor and messages. Some find it lacking in humor, while others enjoy bits of it despite some not-so-great themes. The movie is colorful and follows a suburban family. Doris Day plays Beverly Boye, who becomes famous for promoting Happy Soap. Even with good actors like James Garner, the movie tries to be cute and smart but doesn't quite succeed as a funny 60s film. The humor isn't consistent throughout the movie. There are some funny scenes like the messed up commercial or the soap-filled chaos at home. But overall, it struggles to keep viewers interested. However, there are parts that some people like, but when you look closer, you can see some problems. For example, it shows older women in a certain way and doesn't treat them respectfully. Also, it reinforces traditional gender roles, with Beverly going back to being a housewife after her brief fame. The movie's take on childbirth and the heroics of a male doctor also feel outdated. So, while there are moments of laughter, the movie sends mixed messages about women's roles. Even with its famous cast, the thrill of it all is a movie that divides opinions. It tries to mix humor with saying something about society, but not everyone thinks it works well. In a 1941 Soundies production, Doris Day showcased her vocal talents singing My Lost Horizon with Les Brown and his band of renown. Interestingly, she was considered for the role of Jessica Fletcher in Murder, she wrote but declined due to her retirement from acting. On the other hand, James Garner, known for his role in the movie, underwent heart bypass surgery in 1988, prompting him to reduce his cigarette consumption. However, he didn't quit smoking entirely until 2005. These anecdotes shed light on the lives of the actors involved in the film. In the world of entertainment, there are fascinating stories that often go beyond what we see on screen or stage. For instance, one individual, known for their roles in various films, had a distinctive feature, a lazy left eye, which became apparent during a close-up interview on a popular late-night show. Another figure, who hosted a radio program in the late 1940s, displayed remarkable talent in portraying multiple characters, which ultimately led to a successful career in voice acting. And then there's the tale of a Bel Air mansion that gained fame not just for its grandeur, but also for housing a famous band in the midst of their tour. These anecdotes offer intriguing glimpses into the lives intertwined with the entertainment industry, showcasing a richness that extends far beyond what meets the eye. Isn't it fascinating how some people get their names? Take Zezu Pitts, for example. Her mom found a clever way to make both of her sisters happy by combining parts of their names for her daughter. Moving on, Carl Reiner was recognized for being really funny. He got this big award that shows how much people appreciate his humor. And James Garner, another important person in our story, had a tough time during the filming of a TV show because he got sick. But he didn't let that stop him from doing his job. These little stories give us a peek into the lives of the people involved in our movie. It's all about unique names, being funny, and not giving up even when things get tough. In a peculiar twist of fate, the music played during the scene where the character is having her baby in the car mirrors that of a famous TV pilot. Interestingly, this pilot, shot back in 1963, remained unseen until 2007. Back in 1947, when the actress signed her contract with Warner Brothers, her birth date underwent a slight alteration. They wanted their new star to seem younger, so they adjusted her birth year. Despite this change, she always knew her real birth date and was quite open about it. It wasn't until her 95th birthday in 2017 that her actual birth year was confirmed with the discovery of her birth certificate. In most of her films, the actress's voice was dubbed by Edith Schneider in Germany. It's fascinating how such details can often go unnoticed until they're brought to light. In the 1960s, the ad agency's viewing room featured both color and black and white television side by side. This setup allowed executives to assess how commercials would appear in both formats, a common practice during that era. Under contract to Hal Roach Studios, Zezu Pitts starred in a series of 16 comedy shorts alongside Thelma Todd in the early 1930s. Unhappy with her contract and facing a breakdown in renewal negotiations, Pitts was eventually replaced with Patsy Kelly, a fate shared by other Roach actors during that time. Doris Day, a key figure in the thrill of it all, had an interesting anecdote with Rock Hudson. 
He affectionately referred to her as Eunice because the mere thought of her in that context brought laughter. A glimpse into the personal dynamics of the cast adds a layer of insight to the behind the scenes of the film. These behind the scenes glimpses shed light on the practical considerations of television production in the 1960s and the dynamics within the entertainment industry. The juxtaposition of color and black and white television sets and the internal struggles faced by actors like Zazu Pitts provide intriguing facets to the story behind the thrill of it all. In the early days of James Garner's career, he found himself on Broadway as one of the judges in the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. Reflecting on the experience, Garner emphasized the importance of listening as an actor, considering it an invaluable lesson. Despite moments of battling sleep during evening performances, he realized that being an attentive listener was as crucial as delivering lines. A memorable anecdote from the production of The Thrill of It all involves Zazu Pitts. During screen tests, director Erich von Stroheim requested her to simulate an orgasm while bathing in golden coins. Unfamiliar with the concept, Pitts found herself in an amusing situation as von Stroheim resorted to mimicking sounds to convey the idea. The crew erupted in laughter, but despite the unconventional request, Pitt secured the role. Doris Day's collaboration with Gordon Macri spanned five films, including T for Two, The West Point Story, On Moonlight Bay, Starlift, and By the Light of the Silvery Moon. This partnership showcased their on-screen chemistry in a series of successful productions, contributing to the era's cinematic landscape. These behind-the-scenes insights into the actors' experiences shed light on the nuances of their craft, from the importance of attentive listening to the unexpected and humorous moments that can unfold during screen tests. In the early 60s, the thrill of it all brought together the unlikely pairing of Doris Day, the reigning queen of global box offices, and James Garner, then considered primarily a TV star venturing into films. Despite this contrast, their on-screen chemistry was palpable. The success of the film led to another collaboration in the romantic comedy, Move Over Darling, solidifying Day's box office standing and significantly boosting Garner's film career. Notably, the thrill of it all also had Carl Reiner in its cast, a figure with familial connections to future talents like Jake Reiner, Nick Reiner, and Romy Reiner. The film, though made in 1963, contributed to maintaining Day's top position in the box office stars chart and propelled Garner towards greater cinematic recognition. Reginald Owen, another presence in the movie, later returned to Broadway in 1972, the year of his death. He took part in the Phil Silvers led production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. These actors, each with their own trajectories, brought a collective resonance to the thrill of it all, showcasing the diverse paths Hollywood talents could tread.